Welcome back to Mountain Connections. Right now I'm going to be speaking with the Summit County COVID Collective. This is a group of business leaders who have been instrumental in helping businesses safely open across Summit County. In fact, when we went from the red to orange phase, they helped recommend different restrictions and guidelines for businesses to safely open to our county and government officials. It's been helpful in opening our economy. Many businesses have, of course, been devastated by these shutdowns, by all the restrictions that have been in place place to keep our community safe. So this collective is coming together to help support these entrepreneurs, business owners here in our area. Right now I'm speaking with Earl Foote, Todd Astell, and Seamus McMahon. Welcome to the show. All three of you, we're happy to have you join us. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for having us. Happy to be with you again. Todd, let's start with you. Tell me about the collective and where you are at right now in this time frame. Yeah, so we formed the collective about two and a half months ago, um, recognizing what an impact this was gonna have on our community here in Park City and particularly the small businesses. Uh, and as you mentioned, we went through the process with the county of uh, preparing the proper procedures to reopen uh, under the different phases. And those businesses have been so instrumental. Uh, they, they've been diligent in uh, you know, following those guidelines and, and protecting their teams, their, their, their own crews and the community as well. But we're still seeing, uh, you know, a challenge with the amount of traffic coming to those businesses. Uh, we're still seeing limited number of people that are visiting our community as well. And as you know, we're, we're at the end of our shoulder season or, or quickly approaching it and hope to see a lot of tourists coming from both Utah and other parts of the country. Uh, to bring some of the revenue that those businesses depend on. And Todd, in fact, you're calling this an Economic Resiliency Committee. Tell me more about this committee. Yeah, so in conjunction with this uh, collective, uh, we brought some incredibly talented uh, and, and, and experienced people from the finance world together and started what we'll call a resiliency fund. Uh, and that fund, uh, is geared towards combining the efforts of private cap capital, institutional lending, um, philanthropic efforts, and the uh, government funding that's available so that we can support the businesses that are now reopening in the short term and then also give them you know, uh, an edge or uh, you know, a way to sustain themselves long term even as we slowly reopen. and and as they struggle to bring uh, enough revenue in to, to uh, maintain their business. And Seamus, this is an urgent need. You are really pushing to have things happen immediately to help these businesses. Tell me why you feel that this needs to be done as soon as possible. Well, Christine, uh, the latest numbers indicate that the county lost about a third of its employment, a third of its jobs over the last you know, eight weeks or so. And that is about on par with Las Vegas or other parts of the country that are incredibly dependent on tourism. And of course, we are particularly dependent on tourism in broad terms from the East and West Coast, which have been really hard hit by this pandemic. And our goal here is to think through how we get through the summer, how we get through into the next ski season, hope that the ski season is a strong one, hope that we don't see major events being canceled because of a resurgence of the COVID uh, virus. But in case we do, or to help get through this transition, we're talking about structuring the kind of bond that uh, Todd just referenced. And we're looking into actually probably a one to two year transition, maybe longer for some of these businesses. And you're considering crowdfunding options as well as a resiliency fund. Tell me more about these options of funding to help these businesses who so need it. Let me start with the second one uh, first, Christine. It says social impact bonds have been around for a long time. They're typically associated with causes such as environmental action or education, but they can be used basically for anything where the normal capital markets might look a little bit askance at the returns. And so there's a way of funneling well-intended capital towards uh, institutions, both philanthropic as well as business that seem deserving. But they take about four or five months to set up. In the meantime, uh, although the, we're down to yellow and most of our business can open, the reality is that it's going to be a very tough summer. And we've got this weird mixture of uh, a, a slow demand ramp up and also we've 
you know, businesses have lost a lot of their staff. So in the meantime, how do we help them? And we're looking at something like a Kickstarter campaign or a GoFundMe campaign where we could tap into not just local residents, but also, for example, second homeowners who have strong emotional and financial commitments to the town and county. And Todd, these are long-term solutions as well as short-term solutions. How are you balancing the needs of both? Yeah, that's the challenge is we definitely need a short-term infusion of capital and business for uh, the community here. And one of the efforts we're working on for over a month now is a drive-in movie event. Uh, we've been working with Boyer Company, who's the landlord at Redstone uh, Metropolitan Theaters, um, that owns Redstone 8 and Basin Rec to put together this drive-in event. But there are challenges, you know, we're facing with the other tenants in that area to be able to utilize the parking lot and so forth. Um, so <clears throat> we could use the support of the community. And if you want to join that effort, you can visit our Facebook page or LinkedIn page for the Summit Commer Commerce COVID Collective and voice your opinion or reach out to your local representative or contact Earl or myself directly. Um, and there's other efforts we'd like to undertake as well, like Shane has said, with a uh, crowdfunding uh, type uh, event where we can bring some revenue directly to the businesses. That drive-in event would drive all kinds of business, uh, not just the direct revenue, but obviously to restaurants and other businesses in the area. And Earl, you formed this group. It's evolved over time to provide the most help as possible with these struggling businesses. Todd mentioned how we can get involved. What else can business leaders do to be a part of this? Um, first of all, I just want to say that uh, I want to commend our group for everything that they've been doing and for being conscientious and mindful about helping our, our community recover from this situation. The reality is, as we look at the, uh, the financial experts in our group and, and they start uh, looking at some of the projections, they're, they're pretty bleak and it's, it's pretty concerning about what could happen here with our local economy in Summit County and in Park City and the amount of our, our local businesses that, that can, uh, you know, go bust. Um, and so, uh, first of all, you know, support our community, support our local businesses, buy local when you can. But if you want to get involved with anything that we're doing, uh, please reach out to Todd or I. We're happy to get you connected with our groups um, and begin to collaborate. Again, uh, we're on Facebook and LinkedIn. Uh, feel free to, to interact with us there. Uh, and let's, uh, you know, let's come together as a community of business leaders and try to solve the challenges that, that you know, this COVID pan pandemic has brought to our community. And Todd, you wanted to mention a drive-in movie event at Telluride, which is an example of crowdfunding. I'd love to hear more about that. Yeah, there's been events happening across the country. Um, I just read another CNN story talking about an event that sold out uh, 800 spots uh, at $30 a car, and we don't have that much space, but there is a huge demand uh, for people to get out, right? And, and people have a desire to, again, come together as a community in a safe way. And you can't be any more safe than in your car with your family. Uh, you know, these events, we're broadcasting the audio directly to the vehicle on the FM wave band. And, uh, you know, large uh, movie theater set up. Uh, we've even uh, been working with DJ June, who is the official DJ of the Utah Jazz. And he's ready to put on a, a, a concert in the lead up to the uh, movie night. And of course, that'll be a double feature as well. So again, if we can get some support from the community, I think we can find the right venue. Uh, we appreciate Basin Rec and the county and their willingness to support this. And uh, of course, Metropolitan Theaters and all the businesses in Redstone very much appreciate the support. And Seamus, what can we do? We are all very concerned as community members, business owners, entrepreneurs. How can we help? What are your recommendations? Uh, first thing is to connect to this group and see what the efforts are that you think you could personally align with and get behind them both, you know, at the county and town level and then more broadly let your friends in Salt Lake know. You know, the, the good news here, unlike some other mountain towns, is we're very close to a large metropolitan area. And while we're rebuilding traffic from further afield, let's get people coming back up from Salt Lake. So spread that word. Second, as we develop an interim structure, some kind of uh, crowdsourced funding for businesses, you know, get involved with that. Donate what you can. 
and uh, it will go to businesses and philanthropo- uh, philanthropic efforts that you care about. And then probably sometime in the fall, we'll have a structure which will have, I, I think, a fairly decent return uh, for your money so that you can actually invest and feel good about it. And we will have details about that uh, probably towards the end of the summer. And Earl, I'm going to let you have the last word one more time. How can we find out more information about the collective and how can we get involved to help our local businesses? Yeah, the, the collective's name is Summit Commerce COVID Collective. Uh, this Re- resiliency fund group uh, has yet to have an official name, but uh, if you reach out to Todd or I on LinkedIn or on Facebook, uh, or you can call my office at 435-487-9099, we'd be happy to get you connected. Uh, we're looking for you know business leaders from around uh, the county to connect and collaborate and help us solve the problems. Uh, particularly right now, if you have financial backgrounds with um, yeah, you know with with creative things like social impact bonds, uh, you know let's let's get in touch and figure out how we can uh, leverage your your knowledge and skills. An important conversation to help businesses here in our local area. Thanks to. Todd, Seamus, and Earl for joining us this morning. It's the Summit Commerce COVID Collective. You can find out more online. So if you follow Nexus IT on Facebook, they post updates about this collective and more. So again, thanks for joining us. Up next, we're going to talk more with Earl Foote. He has some tech tips for us on this Business Wednesday. We'll be back right after this quick break.